up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel i hope you guys are doing good so today we are looking at the best double man eater unkillable team comp for clan boss and this one is just so much better than the rest i've been doing loads of uh, account takeovers recently you know i've done michelle i've done Creela, i've done budget and this one honestly it just blows them out of the water there's just no competition so first of all it's full auto there's no setup required. Um, you know, some of them take two or three minutes to set up and you have to remember a skill order. You literally just hit play, walk away, and it's done. Also, there's no stun target needed either. And that can be really difficult to set up. Um, all you need to worry about is just the speeds and the team just works. Um, it's a one key on Ultra Nightmare, Nightmare and Brutal. Uh, some of the other ones only work on Ultra Nightmare or Ultra Nightmare and Nightmare. This one is going to one key all of the uh, all of the top three difficulties for clan boss. It almost works on all of uh, all affinities. So magic void spirit is a one key for force. It is two keys, but you know either you just switch out the um, damage dealer to a spirit champion, a force champion, or void, and that will sort the problem. But still, two key on ultra nightmare, sixty mil damage. That's still really good. Is also one of the most reliable team comps, or most most un, uh, most reliable unkillable team comps. You know, um, I've been using this team comp for two years now, and I've never had a problem. Some of the other unkillable team comps, there can be a patch update, and it just throws your team out of sync and everything stops working. I've never had a problem with this team comp, and it is just so good. So, we've just hit. 550 subscribers on the channel that is huge i just want to say a big thank you to you guys and if you are new to the channel please join me on this journey to reaching that 1k target um you know it's such a big achievement and a huge milestone for any youtuber so please do i really do appreciate your love and support so now that we've sort of uh, looked at the overview of why this is such a good team comp let's look at the speeds and the setup so the speeds are the most important thing to get this to work and that's what we need to look at first so we'll start with the fastest uh, man eater first so he's at 267 speed the second man eater is at 247 then we've got um seeker at 248 uh painkeeper at 247 and then Draco Morph at 220 speed. I know you can play around these speeds, and you know, from what I learned from unkillable team comps, is that really you just want to copy my team. You want to get the speeds exactly the same as mine. If they're one speed out, it can completely ruin the team comp and stop it working. So I think rather than sort of mess around, I think it's just best to get it bang on and just copy the speeds to a T. Otherwise, it might not work. And also talking about speed, um, four of these champions are in speed gear. So you need to be farming dragon. Um, so I built this team two years ago. And back then there was only dungeons 20. So, you know, if you're farming 20, that's fine. You just need to make sure you're getting substats with speed and crit rate and attack percentage and crit damage on them. Just so you can get as much damage for your champions as much as possible. Um, the other thing as well is that, you know, if you can, if you can farm stage 25 and hard mode, that's fine. You obviously six star gear is going to be way better than, um, five star, but you know, you work with what you get, but as long as you hit those speeds, that's the most important thing. So let's, um, just look at the skills. So the fastest man eater, he opens up with the A3, the slow man eater opens up with the A2. Seeker, he knows what he's doing, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, Painkeeper, we need to prioritize the A3 first, and then we need the A2 to be prioritized. Draco Morph, um, we want him to prioritize the A1, and then he'll just do his A2 and his A1. So we've seen the skill, we've seen the um, setup, we've looked at the speed, now let's check out the clan boss run. I'm just going to talk you guys through the run, explain how it works and why it works. So first off, We've got the fastest man eater coming in with his A3. He's going to pop unkillable and block debuffs. So the whole team is built around being unkillable. 
Um, obviously, it means that the clan boss can't kill us until turn 50 when he can just hit through unkillable and he will just drop the team in one big hit. Um, but don't worry, in that time, we are going to do enough damage to get that one key. Uh, block debuffs is really important. It stops the boss being able to stun one, someone on the team. But also with Spirit, um, Spirit Affinity, the clan boss will throw out a slow debuff and that will stop us, you know, that can mess up speed tuning. So we're not going to have a problem with that. Then we've got Seeker coming in with his A2 and that is basically going to boost the turn meter of the whole team and that will keep us in tune with the clan boss so we can keep the unkillable buff up the entire fight. He also does a lot of damage on his A1 as well. Then we've got the second man eater coming in and he's just basically going to do the same as the other man eater but out of sync by one turn and he will also keep up the unkillable and block debuffs for the rest of the fight. Then we've got Painkeeper, who um, on her A3 resets the cooldowns by one turn for everyone. That's really important. That is going to help the man eaters keep up that unkillable buff. She also on her A1 um, will um, fill her own turn meter, and that will keep her nice and fast as well, so she can keep doing that. So then you can have a few different options for Draco. You can have other um, damage dealers in his place, like Bellinor or Tervolt, but... One of the reasons that I really like Draco is that he um, brings drop defense and weaken, and that is going to help the man eaters, the seeker, and uh, pain keeper do damage as well because they will do a lot of damage in those 50 turns and they will help you get that one key. Um, Draco is going to be built in a relentless set, so you can just throw out loads of poisons. You don't have to go relentless, you can grow cruel as well. Um, but I've never tried that myself, but I've heard it does work and it's a one key. But personally, I just think Relentless is better if you've got the gear because you can just throw out all those poisons and they will just start ticking for you and get loads of damage done. So let's uh, skip to the end of the run and just see uh, what sort of damage we've done. Okay, so we've done 75 mil to the clan boss. Uh, this team can really vary between 75 mil to 80 mil. Uh, Draco Morph coming in huge with 34 mil. Then we've got Painkeeper at 7 mil. Seeker at 13, so that's 20 mil if you put those two together. And then we've got the last two Mamias doing 10 mil each as well. So you can see everyone in this team has helped and done a little bit to increase the damage that we do to the boss to get that one key. Um, but yeah, so, let's, uh, so we've looked at that. Now let's check out the gear and the masteries. So we're going to start with Draco. He's actually built pretty badly. Um, you know, ideally he'd be in relentless and cruel, but I couldn't reach the stats with it with my gear at the time. So that's why he's in a crit rate set. Um, gloves, crit damage, chest, attack percentage, and speed boots. Ideally, they would be attack percentage boots. Um, attack on the ring, uh, crit damage on the amulet. And ideally, you'd want like a quad roll on accuracy just to help you reach those um, requirements. And then we've got um, an accuracy banner. Ideally, this would be an attack banner as well. But at the time, I didn't have a good one. And I didn't, I couldn't, you need him to have accuracy to land those debuffs as well. So really important stats are just attack, speed. Obviously, we know it needs to be 220, 100% crit rate. I've gone a little bit overboard. Um, then as much crit damage as possible, ideally 250 and above. And then you need 250 plus accuracy so you can land those poisons. And we can see he's got Brimstone. So before the Brimstone nerf, it was adding like an extra 5 mil damage. Now it only adds about 2 to 3 mil since it's been nerfed. Um, if you are going to choose a, ble a blessing or you're not quite hitting that 70 mil mark, Definitely bring in Brimstone, it will help a lot. Masteries, definitely you just want to blind copy what I've done here. Um, really important, you don't want to take Cycle of Revenge or um, for the other champions, it's okay with Draco um, to take Cycle of Violence, but with any of the other champions, you don't want to take Cycle of Violence, uh, Retribution, um, sorry, not Retribution, Cycle of Revenge or Rapid Response or Arcane Celeratory because they will mess up the speed tuning and it just won't work. So anything that can change your speed tune, you don't want to take. So just to quickly talk you through this as well. So most of the champions are built pretty much the same. Um, we want that crit rate, 
And because our HP is going below um, 50% most of the time, this is going to increase our damage. So we take Grim Resolve. Of course, we want that extra um, crit damage. We take Life Drinker just for the first three turns, just to make sure that no one dies in those first three turns when Unkillable isn't always up. Then just it's basically all about damage all the way down to War Master. So we get as much damage as possible. And with most of the champions, we are going to be taking Retribution so we can do some counter attacks and do some more damage on our A1s. So let's check out who's next on the list. It's probably going to be the fastest man eater. Nope, it's Seeker. So let's check out Seeker. So Seeker's in a triple speed set. And again, we've got crit damage gloves and it's not six star either. So that's definitely something I could do to improve the team. And then we've got attack percentage on the chest, speed on the boots, attack on the ring, crit damage on the amulet, and then attack on the banner. Um, so I've taken crushing rend just to help increase our damage. We've got a little bit more attack. Sorry, just realized we missed the stats back to the stats. So again, two, four, eight, really important for the speed as much attack as possible. Ideally, you want 100% crit rate, but 88 is perfectly fine as well. Again, 250 crit damage if you can, and he doesn't need any other stats. And again, here are the masteries, just blind copy them. That will definitely, you know, get you the one key. I'm just gonna double check that I've not gone past the fastest man eater. So this is my slower man eater. Yep, that's the slow man eater. So he's again, triple speed set and a divine seed set. Doesn't make any difference. Um, and he's in crit damage gloves, attack percentage on the chest, speed on the boots, attack on the ring, crit damage on the amulet, and again, attack on the banner. Um, I've not put a blessing on him yet. Um, I'm gonna leave that for now. It's not really important. He doesn't really need it. And again, here are the masteries. As you can see, he, he doesn't really benefit from any of these other masteries, so that's why I've sort of left them blank for now. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's just not needed. So this is the fastest man eater, and he has actually got crit rate gloves, and he actually did about the same amount of damage. So it shows you that if you can't, on the certain champions, if you can't reach, you know, 100% crit rate or get decent amount of crit rate. You can just throw on crit rate gloves as long as you reach those speeds. Then we've got um, attack on the chest. Again, speed on the boots. Attack on the ring. Crit damage on the amulet and attack on the banner. And again, just the same with the mastery. Just blind copy it. And then we just got to go down to pain keeper. So Pain Keeper is in one piece crawl and two pieces speed. You can go, you know, triple speed. It's not a problem. Just as long as you get that same speed level. So we've got a uh, crit damage on the gloves, attack on the chest, speed on the boots. And that's actually, she's a HP based champion. And I think, I oh know her skills do do is based on attacks. So that's fine. You do want attack on her. So attack on the chest, attack on the ring, crit damage on the amulet and i could probably level this up just to you know do a bit more damage but yeah attack on the banner total stats 3.4 attack very low would love that to be higher again 247 you must get the speeds bang on um almost 100 crit rate 220 crit damage that's fine i'm happy with that um skills i've taken phantom touch just in case to help us increase the amount of damage we do. And we also get a little bit of extra attack as well. And again, um, Masteries doesn't really benefit for anything for the sport tree for Clan Boss. So I've not bothered putting anything in. Um, and yeah, and then again, just all about damage on the offense tree. So that is the end of the video, guys. Um, you know, if you've got a really cool uh, Clan Boss team, please do get in touch with me or drop a comment below. Um, I'd love to showcase it and just show some different uh, clan boss teams for other people to check out. But yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Please do leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll catch you in my next video. Peace.